saying that I will be teaching students about trying to help them to understand that everybody has uh, values and beliefs and prejudices about other people. And the difficulty about teaching it is when you're talking about it, everyone says, oh yeah, yeah, but I have well, it, it doesn't influence me. You know, I never, I never react to somebody in a negative way because of the way I think about them. But the reality is, you do as a human being, and it's about trying to demonstrate that, really. So we were trying to think of a way that you could do that. And uh, one of the things that we were saying is, Vincia said, um, well, it's interesting because you were talking about Wallace and Gromit beforehand, and I have no idea who Wallace and Gromit is. I don't understand. I know. That's shocking. I don't understand what Wallace and Gromit is. And we were talking about actually the meaning behind it because I could say Wallace and Gromit, and actually that would be, I would be happy with I would like that. Vincia said, like, what on earth Wallace and Gromit is a very strange thing. And it got us to thinking about behind a word there's a culture, and then and people come with a culture, and sometimes it doesn't be menacing but you come with a whole load of your childhood memories or your experiences of life. So we've set off to try and find something about Wallace and Gromit. Along the way, we didn't find Wallace and Gromit, but, but we found Thomas the Tank Engine. And the bits have stopped and went, see Thomas is another good example. He never knew anything about Thomas the Tank Engine until he came to England and now his nephew is very much as Thomas the Tank Engine. Whereas I have two young boys, so we've grown up with Thomas the Tank Engine. I've read all the books, so believe me, I've watched all the videos of Thomas the Tank Engine. So actually, when I look at Thomas, it brings with me a lot of fond memories of Rick. It brings back my memories of sitting with boys when they were young. And Whereas I, where I look at Thomas, even now, I think it's somebody on some heavy drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but never mind, that's okay. So there was something about just demonstrating even something as simple as looking at that, that it, actually people look at it with different perspectives and they might, and it's tissues, it doesn't matter, but for a bit so you might go, I don't want that anywhere near me, whereas I go, and actually go went, oh, it is all these tissues, how lovely it was. And we also were thinking about um, how culture is very different, and we were talking about, for a bit so it's been very great today, because he was talking about an Italian to appear to be rude. So before you all came in downstairs, we asked the lady down at the shop, she didn't mind us visiting. Fabrizio yeah. came in to ask for a coffee, very Italian, very Cayman, and he, she was doing what he thought was making the coffee very slowly, so he pulled the face, got very annoyed, and he just left. And he was saying in Italy that would be acceptable, that would be fine. Whereas to us, we would say, that's really rude. And if we, we want to show the video and say to people, How, what would you think of him? What would that say about him as a person? But actually within his culture, that would be perfectly acceptable. To go in, get frustrated because someone's too slow, and then to be fair, they are very slow. We were demonstrating. So for my scenario, that's what we've come up with. Um, my, my, scenario, my scenario was quite similar in, in that um, in my uh, 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 teaching that I've been doing, I've got to get um, or people talk about a lot of myths related to spinal pain, a lot of myths is spoken, and uh, that can be a barrier to actually, actually patients getting better or, or helping themselves. So we were thinking about the common myths that people are told, like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. We don't really know if that's true, it may not, may or may not be true. And um, also um, that people might like chocolate, might think it's something, but is it or isn't it? So we did a couple of videos where Fabrizio was a brilliant passive patient taking on information and firstly was the perceived expert um, and uh, telling Fabrizio that he's at one of these, that was his prescription, he needs one of these a day and that will he'll get, that was, you know, help him lose weight because it was interested in how he's going to lose weight. And then the second video was about if he had an apple a day, that would help him lose weight. And in a way, he wants to get across uh, to people that patients can be very passive and actually what you tell them can actually be a barrier um, to them actually do because they need to get themselves better. And we wanted to show, didn't we, that we would show the two videos and say, which, what do you think yeah. of the videos? And that we think people instantly say, well, obviously, chocolate a day, that's not healthy, but actually the apple might be. But the point being is actually there's no evidence to show that either of those would, would make any difference to your diet. In the same way that physios are saying, when if you go swimming, don't do breaststroke because it's bad for your back, which apparently is said a lot. But actually, there's no evidence for that. And actually, you may be, it may be more detrimental to the person by stopping them doing that. Activity that they want to do. Yeah. So that was the demonstration. So the outcome is to tell the students you need to judge case by case and you need to be able to communicate that as well that you are judging.
Yeah. And so, going back to communication again, we, um, my aim for next week's second year lesson is to um, explain how to write a CV for my students here abroad next year. They're all going to go to Italy for a year. And they have to come up with some sort of like, CV to present to potential employers. And that was, um, that my aim will be to try and explain to them that um, what a UK employer um, would be looking for could be different from what an Italian employer would be looking for. And definitely one of the elements that is quite important in the Italian CV is the um, education. So perhaps the education sometimes is even more important than your work experience in Italy. So um, in the educational system there's lots of things that are very different from one system to the other. One of them is A levels, so we started talking about A levels. And I said, there's no such thing as A-level from Italy, the system is different, how can we show that? And um, that's why we were wandering around the Arndale Centre and I found this girl with... Um, Not a real girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on a poster. On a poster. <laughs> <laughs> Things you do to say... <laughs> with uh, a very neat tie and uh, that is quite shocking for me because no girls with little girls with ties in Italy, and there's no uniform uh, after 10 years of age in Italy in, in Italian school. So, and that kind of idea of belonging to a school in Italy is really not there. So, very, I'm thinking now about showing my students this picture and telling them, do you think this would be acceptable in Italian context? See the girl, little girl with a uniform and a tie, and it's definitely not. I can tell you that. And, uh, and um, so. The, 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 the picture will help me uh, get a message across about cultural differences in the education system and show them how to write. Good, good. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any of the ideas? I just think that the clarity of thoughts, just so. I can feel like I, I can put that on my CPD return now to the institution. Three new things I've learned. <laughs> so it's, you know. The fact that it's such a clear story and so concise and tell shows that you've found the right things. Yeah. Or you found the right way to think about it. So you can put anything down there now and articulate that story. Mm -hmm. What I would I really like to tell is, you know, we were talking about, oh, I bet anybody could relate anything to, to anything. And it is that whole idea for us, we would talk about, you know, this, this idea of culture. We talk about heritage a lot in our um, practice, in, in our, on our course. And, and I think that you articulated that really well. It's interesting to see that we just, we talk about the same thing, but we just label them in different ways. And, and, and that's really, you know, any barrier to communication is just really the language. It's the usage and the interpretation of words. And actually, if, if we can appreciate that what, what I'm saying to you means something to me, but means something completely different to you, then I think we'll all... And just to finalise, so the one thing was that in all our three lectures, the main point was that there's no one-to-one -one equivalent, either culturally or linguistically, or you know, and that was basically what it all boils down to for, for us in, in our three lectures, and uh, that, that was really interesting. Yeah.